I've got is five o'clock. So, well, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me uh, call to order this uh, pre commission session of the Macon Bibb County uh, Commission for uh, Tuesday, August the 18th. And let me read my little uh, statement here out of an abundance of caution Macon Bibb County Commission meetings scheduled for Tuesday, August the 18th, 2020, will be available to the Macon Bibb County Commissioners by video conference only. Uh, for the five o'clock pre-commission meeting and the six o'clock p.m. commission meeting, commission chambers will be closed to the public and the press in order to slow the spread of COVID-19. Therefore, the public and press may only access the meeting simultaneously online at www.makingbib.us or www.facebook.com forward slash Macon Bib County. Um, with that having been said, uh, I see we do have uh, a, a more than a, a quorum of folks looking at my attendance uh, uh, roster and, and pictures. Welcome. Uh, glad that you are here. Um, I have one very short announcement uh, to, to, uh, to make to the commissioners that there is to be a, a, a socially distanced uh, ribbon cutting ceremony tomorrow morning at 9.30 at Middle Georgia State University for the new roundabout. Um, and I understand a couple of our commissioners are planning on being there and making comments. Um, so you're all invited and, and would be welcome uh, to attend Middle Georgia State University, the ribbon cutting on the new entranceway and roundabout uh, to, their, to their main campus. Uh, with that ha having been said, uh, are there any additions uh, to our agenda for the pre-commission meeting? Uh, any new business that we need to bring up? I just want to know why y'all didn't come and save me from jail. <laughs> jail. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't. I didn't know you. I didn't. I didn't know you needed saving. I just, I had only Rabbi. Rabbi was the only one who prayed for me. Please, that's all you needed. The rest of you, I'm, I'm. Well, how do you know we didn't pray for you too? That's right. That's right. Because. <laughs> uh, we got a couple of items, Mr. Mayor. All right. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, I, I like for Michael. We do have the uh, newest mask mandate uh, that I worked with over the past couple of days with Michael. Um, we do have it ready and could add it to the agenda. I don't wish to add it to the agenda. I, I would like for commissioners to see it first so they can have uh, input and uh, or we can go from there. If we've got time, if you want to share some of it, that'll be fine. I don't want to get long drawn out because I want commissioners to be able to see it. Uh, the other item is that uh, uh, I've gotten all my questions and answers uh, in response to the train uh, property. And I wanted to uh, make a motion to uh, move that off the table and get it added back to the agenda. Um, in order. Right. Well, I, I, I will. I will take that as a as a motion to add it to the agenda uh, as we as we go down under new new business, uh, um, and and we 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 will say it. So that's a motion to add uh, the train recreation contract uh, to the agenda for further discussion. Is there I'll a second, second to that, that motion? I'll uh, second it. Second, second, second by uh, Schlesinger. Uh, all in favor of adding it to the agenda for discussion. Later in the meeting, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say no. No. Got got one one no. That was Commissioner Bivens, I believe, but the ayes have it. So we'll add it to the agenda. Uh, for, I think brother. it was Watkins. Yeah. Watkins. Watkins. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, please excuse me. It was Commissioner Watkins that voted no. Um, but that the ayes have it. So we'll add that to the agenda. And we'll also add a, a, a discussion of the mask ordinance uh, from from Michael if we get down that far, if he doesn't cover it uh, under his other uh, update on the governor's executive order. With that having been said, uh, I think the first thing that we need to be brought up to date on uh, is the, the CARES Act funding. Uh, and Julie Moore uh, has a, a, 
a presentation uh, to make uh, for us at this point. Julie, are you there? And can you unmute yourself and lead us in that discussion, please, ma'am? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. You're good. Um, we have a PowerPoint. Rachel, do you have that loaded? Uh, she does. If you'll just give her a few minutes, she had to uh, reboot her machine. It'll just give her just a couple of minutes. Less, less than a minute. So we, uh, I'll talk to, to what the PowerPoint is, is going to um, point out. We've learned a lot in the last week since we talked to you last Tuesday and have been um, successful in getting into the portal that the state has set up where we have to submit all of the paperwork for this funding. And we've also had some clarification on what we were able to submit in the first round phase one, part one, which is the $2.4 million worth of expenses. And um, the main thing that we've learned is we had a little different end date of what they were accepting as reimbursables. So the state asked that everything that was being submitted for 2.4, thank you, Rachel, is actually an expense that we occurred prior to June 30. So we had to go back and get some different receipts and, and categories and um, so this is just kind of a reminder of the information we gave you last week. And Rachel, we can run through a lot of these early slides and get to um, what we have at the one of the last slides, which is really the budget that we're trying to work off of of how we're submitting based on what is sometimes some changing information in the moment that we are, are making some of our submissions. Um, you see here that we're still hoping that our whole pro rata population based formula will mean that we're really eligible for $26 million, but all we've signed for at this point is the $8 million. And all that we've had to go ahead and submit is the 2.4. So Rachel, if you want to keep running down those pretty quickly, we'll get to the last slide that says how we've submitted. Um, and here, yeah, keep going to the last one. This is the same PowerPoint as last. We had, this is the, what we thought we, we were going to be submitting. And then the, oh, there should have been a last slide on there. That, that might be it. So go up one slide. Go up one slide for me. Thank you. So what we were able to submit that we had actual appropriate invoices and reimbursements and, and pay stubs and all of the documentation required, um, we were able to submit the $2.4 million and we had to be within a dollar of the amount given to us. And we have reached out to um, the Department of Health as well as River's Edge and I really have to thank them for their fast work because they were able to go back and readjust and give us more information so that we were only submitting expenses that had been incurred through June 30th. But you'll see that we were able to submit for telemedicine capabilities that were established through River's Edge, payroll expenses for public health and health care, that's both River's Edge and Department of Health employees that we were able to, to seek reimbursement for that. Um, we were able to claim all of the payroll expenses for our public safety employees, and I want to put an asterisk by that number because it's one of the things that has continued to be reiterated from GMA and ACCG that this is an expense the state feels very comfortable with and they want us to use it because it's easy for them to process. We did not use the total amount here because we're saving a bunch of that for the next round. Um, but we were able to claim a significant amount. We had receipts for additional sanitation measures that have been taken when we've called in some outside folks to help clean offices once we've had any sort of positive exposure known. We were able to claim some of the costs that we've um, that the Department of Health has incurred for caring for the homeless populations. You may have seen some of the um, porta potties and hand wash stands that were put out in four downtown locations because when um, places closed and people didn't have access to restrooms that, that we needed to provide that and, and Department of Health stepped up and did that so we're seeking that reimbursement. Some additional distance learning again for Rivers Edge and some of the folks that they um, help with on a daily basis. 
expenses for food delivery, some improvements that we had already incurred by the end of June for telework, and then some of our other big um, reimbursables were for the paid family leave, the paid medical leave, and the PPE for employees. But again, it was a little different um, once we got in the portal and realized that it was a June, a June 30th, so we had to shuffle some of those numbers around. But all of those have been submitted, and we are waiting for the state approval that we've given all the appropriate documentation and that they will approve these as reimbursable expenses. And that will let us go for the 5.5 million. But what we have also um, kind of had clarifying information about is that 5.5 has to have been an expenditure that occurred prior to September 1st. And so while some of the, the federal regs say this money can run through December 30th, the state uh, is asking that they want this first 30% to have been spent before September 1st. So on the second slide, Rachel, if you'll go to that one, we have rearranged the numbers to see um, what we can do to meet that goal and get to the um, $8 million. And that, again, is going to be more of the telemedicine funding, public health and healthcare employee funding, um, public safety employees, and you'll see that we're um, continuing with some additional sanitation measures, which might include adding plexiglass in other areas in public buildings or continued cleaning, uh, continued care for homeless populations, expense, expenses for food delivery, the improving telework capabilities. We have ordered computers and are waiting for those to arrive because, again, another stipulation that has become very clear to us in the last seven days is that all of that equipment has to be in hand by September 1st for it to qualify in this round of funding. We are anticipating paid medical leave and PPE for public employees that we will continue to incur. So that would get us to the $8 million. If we are successful in going through all the, the gates, as they're calling, and, and approved for everything, we think this will open up the $16 million where we might have the ability to be more creative and get money out into the community. But because the stipulations were things that had been spent by June 30th and things that had been spent by September 1, this is the best we can do to get to the $8 million. So at this point, again, we have submitted the 2.4. We're waiting for final state approval. And this is our plan to submit for the 5.5 so that we will have given all the information they need to give us the third round of funding. Uh, Mr. Allen, I, I, I'll get to you in half a second, uh, but let, let me get a point of clarification. Um, we have to submit this 5.5 figure by September the 1st. Is that right? Yes, and it has to be expenses that were incurred by September 1st. Okay, so so we've got today. Today is August the 18th. We have committee meetings uh, next week. That's the 25th. But the next time we would be able to meet and formally uh, approve anything is the night, the evening meeting on September the 1st, which is too late. So that brings us to the, we either going to have to. Uh, go back and, and adopt some kind of language uh, to allow us to, to submit and resubmit. And if something's rejected, then resubmit again um, as an administrative act. Or we're going to have to have a special call meeting uh, to, to finally approve what, what goes in. So, Chairman Watkins, this I trust will be on your agenda for next uh, Tuesday, uh, Operations and Finance. Uh, so I, I I have some questions and I have some concerns on uh, on what I'm looking at. Just this first time processing it or seeing it today, um, and I'm willing to let's do a special call meeting on Thursday for the purposes of going over this CARES Act in a little greater detail. Because I'm not I'm not sure about the rest of the commission, but like I say. I, I need a little bit of clarification. Uh, fine. I was thinking that, that your meeting on next Tuesday could be a time when you would go over this operations and finance meeting and and hash it out at that point in time. But so and <laughs> we still we still may have to have a special call meeting if you I want that I'm, to, to adopt. I'm confused to the point of this, <laughs> your first question. Like last time, last time we discussed this. 
everything needed to be submitted by September 1st. So if I'm understand things could be encumbered but not expended by that time. So I'm understanding that the language of encumbered has went away and the document needs to be submitted by September 1st and all things need to be expended. Yeah, yeah this came out last night. Um, and, okay. as, you know, and just to give y'all context, um, when, the, when the federal government released the PPP funds to be spent, there was a lot of confusion. It was administered through banks for small businesses about how you spend it, et cetera. And they kept changing the regulations. Well, this is kind of like Groundhog Day. They're doing the same thing here. So these came out last night. Um, and so, for example, to answer your question, Commissioner Watkins, um, can counties enter projects for planned expenditures? And this is a question. Can counties enter projects for planned expenditures, even if they have not been incurred, to spend against phase one dollars in order to meet the September 1st deadline? They keep saying, and the answer to these goods and services must be received and paid for by September 1st to qualify for any reimbursement. And the danger of this uh, is, is changed. Even that September, that June 30th date, which Julie was talking about for part one, which is the 2.4 million, it, we thought it was going to be September 1st, and they moved that back out to, back to June 30th. So the point of this is you got to spend it and get the services and good in, uh, goods in hand by September first for that five point whatever reimbursement and the the gating she was talking about is we've got to do that part properly in order to be eligible for the 16 million that's the phase two part of this is that correct julie am i saying that right correct and i, I think that's more likely what commissioner Watkins is, is really going to want to get his hands on as far as the 16 million of thinking how we get it out into the community because at right. this point we can't claim an action going forward, we can only claim anything that's been spent prior to. Prior to this document being released last night, we thought, and to, to and you're, you were correct, that what we had to do in part two, which is the 5.5, was to submit a plan with a budget that would be spent by December 30th. And that's been changed as of last night. So you've got to spend the money by September 1st and have the goods and services received by September 1st. So it's and that is, and that's for the five point whatever million. That's for that's for both. That's right. That's for both five point five and the first part, which is two point four. So it's all it's all being treated the same now. In September mm -hmm. first, you got to spend it and have the goods and services in hand. Well, can I ask this question to Julie? Have we spent any? Well, well hold on, hold on, Commissioner Wynn. Hold on, I had Commissioner Allen first, then I'll go to you, Commissioner Allen. Thank you, sir. Uh, Julie. The money that we're dealing with now, we have the landfill that's closed. We have the other departments that we're low on personnel. We can't keep anybody running. Can't keep these uh, departments running. Can any of that fund money that you talked about earlier be utilized to hire part-time people to put these divisions back up and running? At this point, we have not been able to figure out or get a question answered that made us feel comfortable in submitting those reimbursables. What we feel comfortable in submitting reimbursable for is public safety funding for patrol and fire suppression, and then that money would come back to us, and then I think once it's, it's back to us in our grant fund, if we transfer it to general fund, we could use it to supplement other things more specifically, but as far as trying to all of the regs that we have at this point, we really feel much more comfortable with um, public safety salaries. We have not figured out how to, as we tried to talk about how do we maybe supplement some of these departments that we're having but, people out. But Julie, wouldn't Nigel's department in the electrical with the red lights and stuff be considered something of, of danger that, you know, is needed if the electricity goes out or I meant almost like uh, police or fire. They've been pretty um, consistent with their answers and the frequently asked questions that what is eligible is public safety as defined by fire, EMS, and um, police patrol. And they don't want police admin and they don't want fire admin. They want really specifically police and fire and that they believe the Treasury guidelines are going stand behind them and say that every call they had to take could have been a COVID related call. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Wynn, go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you. So Julie, we have, from what you 
get from what I gather expended 2.4 million for the June 30th deadline. Is that correct? But have we gone any, have we come anywhere near spending five point whatever million for the next deadline, which is September 1st? It is the second PowerPoint, and, and I may send one out to you all just by email that may be easier to see side by side, that we have identified public safety salaries, and again, really grateful that the Department of Health and River Edge, A, keep such good records and were able to submit with us that between those big salaries and our salaries and the PPE expenditures and the telework, yes, I think we can submit accurate documents, appropriate documents in the line items that they are allowing us to, to do and claim the $8 million and it will have been spent by September 1st. And I hope by doing that, it gets us to that third phase, which will give us the opportunity to do more uh, grant-based to the community, you know, things that, that I think uh, Commissioner Watkins and I have talked about and others, we know we want to see that happen, but we've kind of got to get these first two right and, and we are trying our best to make sure we have all the documentation. Needed I'm just hoping we can get that second phase done so we can get to that third phase. I hate, hate to lose any of this money that they're offering. Julie, will you circulate the, uh, the guidance released by the uh, governor's office? Uh, Commissioner Watkins had requested that. So, is that the frequently asked questions yeah. that we received? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Commissioner Watkins? Yeah. And I <clears throat> So I'm clear on, I guess, the game that's being played with the the total allocation is twenty three million dollars. Correct. And am I understanding that if all of the two point four, like, if the two point four million isn't completely expended, do we still have access to twenty three million dollars or? If we don't spend a million dollars, we lose a million dollars in that. No, you, you have to exhaust, and, and tell, tell me if I'm saying it's right, because you've been on the portal more than I have, but I've read the regulations. If you, the way I read it, and again, the, the, the game we're having to deal with is, the, and this is not a disrespectful to the governor's office, but the, the rules change sometimes, and we don't really know, like we got these last night, is that you have to, the way I understand it, the way I read the regulations, you've got to spend completely the 2.4 part one to get to part two, which is the 5.5. Then you got to spend the 5.5 completely exhausted in order to get phase two, which is the 16 million. So that's, you got to go through every gate and completely exhaust it before you get to the next gate. And what was not clear to us last week last Tuesday was that we were going to have to have um, receipts for payments that occurred June 30 for the 2.5 and September 1 for the 5.5. Um, but again, I'm just grateful we do have some community partners who are able to, to you know, have their paperwork in, in great order um, with timesheets spent that said clearly COVID related to um, perfect receipts with dates that matched and we were able to get that 2.4 in. And as soon as I get approval that that 2.4 has been accepted, uh, this is the plan to continue in that same uh, allowable expenditure, li expenditure line and capture July and August costs and that should get us to the 8 million. All right. Two. So that was exciting. I got two questions. Um, so if I'm understanding you right, like you got a total of five million almost, or that three point eight million from the second half. And if I'm understanding, that is just the basic salaries of police and fire department. Yeah. Correct. Did that include the seven hundred thousand we've paid for commercials? Have we paid that yet? Or no, we haven't paid it. We have not paid it yet. We don't have anything that we can count as an expenditure out the door yet. We are working to pay a few of those invoices this week so that we might be able to complain. Can we get that, that can we get that invoice and pay it early? Ask that we're working on that for this week. All right, if, if there are no further questions right now, let me move on. Uh, and, and Michael, can you give us an update, please, sir, on the governor's most recent uh, order? Um, and like I said, order. expect uh, expect more time for this on Thursday. We can work out a, uh, a time, um, but I, I think it wouldn't be a bad idea. 
Actually, let me see what we're if, if I mean, you, you, what you're saying, Commissioner Watkins, is you'd like to have a special call meeting uh, of, of, of the commission on Thursday rather, rather than waiting until next Tuesday and meet uh, at your during your committee. I, I had thought that well, maybe what I'm we could saying, use Yes, that's what I'm saying. That's just well, exactly what I'm saying. You haven't asked who can come. I can't come Thursday. You just All right. Right. Are you on the committee? Is it the finance committee right. or the entire commission? Yeah, what yeah. is it? Well, I think it would have to be the entire commission, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. I need a quorum of the finance committee. We want to, if you want to do a, if you want to do a, a, a special call, if you, the if, committee if, on that day, I'll, 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 right. I'll, it, I'll uh, drop down because of that, but otherwise I would expect to meet. Okay. Well, I, I don't, I don't mind commissioner Watkins. Uh, if you want to try to call a special call meeting of your operations and finance committee, if you can get a quorum, uh, then certainly you can get your committee together and y'all can look at this and, and if Julie is available and hopefully she, she can make herself available or somebody and, and bring you up to speed and answer as many questions for you as, as we can. Uh, but as far as taking official, as far as taking official action by the commission, you know, hopefully we'll, we, we won't need to do that. Uh, but, we, but we may. Uh, and but that I guess would be, what I be subsequent to the 28th. I mean, the 25th. No, what I keep getting concerned about that is that the natural meeting date is September 1st. And if you don't have anything in order before September 1st, I, I, you know, that is also the deadline day. And I think we've scheduled to meet at like five o'clock on that day. So I don't know if it's a midnight deadline or what, but that's just pushing it really close. So. And yeah, let me also say that uh, I, I think what they said in the language, and do correct me if I'm wrong, is that you all needed to accept the terms and agreements which you have, and that otherwise everything's by policy, which is we our grant policy is that we apply for grants and put budgets in, and then if we actually get the grant, we bring it in, and then that's when it's approved. So they have told us repeatedly from the state, we need to get this in as quickly as we can so that they still have time to look and say, well, no, this cost didn't really match and they'll kick it back to us and we have a chance to come back. So I, I agree with you, um, Commissioner Watkins, we need to really nail down your your committee next Tuesday at the latest of, of any further um, questions or, or, or numbers that we're needing to submit because we don't want to wait. So, I guess also like last time that we met, <clears throat> We were, we were supposed to have a budget for the 2.5. We, we, I think we verbally approved that um, last week. And I think we were expected to have that for us to vote on today. I don't, I don't know if I see that. So if we, we decided that either we didn't need that or we're not going to do that. And I'm still concerned about the idea that you don't think we're going to need those, that documentation of the, like, it seems weird to me, but if Duke's available, Elizabeth, uh, so we maybe I'm all... out of an abundance of caution to have you all approve something next Tuesday, which is why I think it would be good for you to have a special called meeting after the committee meetings in the morning, just as an extra precaution. I do not think it is absolutely necessary according to our grant policies, but I'm very comfortable with you all trying to um, approve this just so we can have one more thing that says people agreed to it. Do yeah, right. Now, we don't have. We don't have. Go. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's okay. Um, so, from a legal standpoint, the commission has done what it's supposed to do by in getting the money already. It, it approved the acceptance of the eight point whatever, and it approved the execution of that funding agreement. The commission has the discretion. It does not have to do this to approve whatever officially or unofficially. My instinct is y'all want to keep it a little bit flexible. I do recommend that there be weekly. Uh, information given to y'all about the spending of this money, et cetera. I know Julie has already talked about that, but it's within your discretion how you handle the budget. But remember, the first part is already has to have already been spent by June thirtieth anyway. There's not there's not a whole lot of discretion on that. And then the second part has to be spent, and the goods and services have to be in hand by September first. So I agree with you. The sooner that we meet and get this worked out, the better, so we can get we can get to phase three. Michael. Let me add, if we get to phase three, I think that's where you would want to be most involved and in that I would feel more comfortable if you approved budgets, if you were saying we want to 
spend 500,000 grants to small businesses or we want to spend 500,000 to PPE, because that's forward facing and long term, I think that I would feel more comfortable if you were approving a budget that we were submitting for that. But because these are reimbursables, I'm just scrambling around finding everything that is reimbursable that we can submit. And um, I'm, I've, the numbers I've presented tonight that I'll send out to you by email are um, the best I have right now. And then by tomorrow, some of them will be a little tighter numbers as we continue to get documentation. And I would be happy to present that to you Thursday or next Tuesday. Right. I don't want it to hold me up from having the but ability to submit for the what, reimbursable. What? What so I'm inclined. Please what send I'm, me the documentation, oh, Commissioner, <coughs> Commissioner Washington. Commissioner Washington, let, let me say this: What I'm inclined to do at this point is to, if you want to call a special call meeting of your committee later this week, and you can get a quorum, that's fine. And Julie can meet with you and your committee to look through this. Uh, we do. We will plan on having and next Tuesday um, at the, during the commission, uh, the committee meeting days. Uh, we'll have that time, but then a special call meeting of the commission following the committee meetings, maybe at one o'clock, uh, uh, say one o'clock p.m. next Tuesday, the, the 25th, and that would be for the sole purpose of trying to approve the submission and give the flexibility that in case the, the state kicks something out, give Julie the authority to switch over and amend it and send it back in before the first. Cause I think that's the whole key to it that, that she may hear, you know, with 24 hours notice that we're not going to allow this. Well, if you've left that money on the table, that could be a deal killer for getting into round two. Uh, so you've got to give her the flexibility to amend it and send it back in, but we'll have more details on all of this next Tuesday at, at committee meetings. And I, and I appreciate it, but it just it's there is a there is a strong chance that when we get to the conversation about the 16 million that you tell me about overnight that you have until all expenses need to be spent until by October 1st or something special like that um, is just the way this is going and. I, no, yeah, well, well, the governor's well, office is not from us. We we, we just well, send them. Yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not blaming. Yeah. I'm just saying that is. Yeah, it it is. That it's is a problem. And again, it's just me speaking right now. But I know several other commissioners have concerns, and I still don't see at the beginning of the concerns is commissioners Allen's uh, community engagement dollars. I don't see where that's calculated at all. At and. I, so I'm, but anyway, I say we. There's other stuff on your agenda today. I'm very interested in the conversation on blight. Um, right. So we'll expect to do this at some other day. Good. Okay. Uh, Michael, you want to do the update on the governor's executive order? Yes, sir. And and just one quick comment about it, just to remind the board, if uh, there is a special call meeting to be called for, for operations and finance for later in this week by the Open Meetings Act, we have to give 48 hours notice to the press. So if it was right now, you'd be talking about 530 p.m. on Thursday. So, you know, if that's something you wanted to do, we would be really talking about probably a Friday meeting um, at this point. But um, turning to the, the governor's order, um, so the, the governor's uh, latest order came out um, on the 15th on Saturday and um, really represented a sea change in the, um, in the orders that, that he's been doing the last, it was a big departure from the last uh, five or so. This current order runs through the end of August, which is uh, August the 31st is a Monday. And, um, and there were there were a few substantial changes that that he made in this order. Um, the first one and and the biggest one as as it relates to this board has to do with um, local face masking uh, requirements. And um, he adds two definitions to the definition section. Um, the first is the term local option face covering requirement, which is a, a requirement that complies with what I'll, I'll spell out in just a moment as far as. Um, <laughs> allowing local governments to require face, uh, face masks in public. And then he adds a second definition for threshold requirement, which means that over the last 14 days, um, the county has had a, a, a total of 100 new cases over those 14 day period per 100,000 population or more. 
as published by the Georgia Department of Public Health. And um, the last I checked, this was Saturday. Um, our case rate was 586.3 cases per 100,000 people over the last 14 days. So right now where I talk about threshold requirement, we have met that. And um, from looking at the map on the public health website, um, just about every county in the state of Georgia has met that. Um, and Spencer Hawkins just mentioned to me that it's 645 today is our 14 day history rate. Um, in section four, the healthcare section, um, there were new provisions added for uh, dentist students and dental hygienist students that finished school in 2020, but have not been able to take the licensing exam because of it being delayed or postponed because of COVID. Um, those students are able to get temporary licenses through the Georgia Board of Dentistry and practice under the supervision of a licensed dentist um, and along with any other regulations that may be promise, uh, uh, promulgated from the Georgia Board of Dentistry through the end of the public health emergency, however long it continues to be extended, which right now is scheduled to end September 10th, but he's been extending those on a 30-day increment. Um, Section seven, education and children. Um, there's, there's generally a requirement for um, child care programs to be licensed through the, um, the state of Georgia. And uh, one of the exceptions to that licensing program is for summer day camp programs that are operating only during the summer break in the school year. And so in this uh, latest order, he adds a, a, a section that allows those uh, license exempt summer day camp programs to continue operating um, in overlap with the school year that's now started um, for the purpose of providing a site where students can come in and um, participate in remote learning for their school as long as there's uh, no more than a child to staff ratio of, of 20 children to one staff member and they're subject to additional monitoring and restrictions uh, requirements. Um, there was also a, a section that eased napping requirements for pre-K programs um, for half-day pre-K programs. Um, and both of those provisions will continue to remain in effect for as long as the public health emergency continues to be extended. The um, government section is where he adds in these new rules for the uh, mask ordinance. And um, if you look at the... Um, order. These are, I think, page 38 and 39 of the new executive order. And there are two new permissions that are granted with respect to mask uh, ordinances. The first one allows for all jurisdictions in Georgia, all governmental entities in Georgia, um, to include counties and cities, but also things like industrial authorities, school board, and so on, um, to require, to, to control the terms by which people can enter onto governmental property. And so that um, specifically includes requiring face masks of employees and members of the public that enter onto governmental property. Um, and so one of the two uh, ordinances that I prepared for Mayor Pro Tem uh, reflects that and calls for a uh, requirement to wear face masks while on Macon Bibb County property. Um, the second requirement that the governor, or the second permission that the governor granted in this executive order says that we can impose general face mask requirements on the public as long as we meet this threshold requirement level, which again is um, 100 cases per 100,000 people total over the last 14 days. So that's not 100 cases per day, that's total over the last 14 days um, per 100,000 people. And we can impose those requirements um, subject to a list of exceptions and limitations. Um, it cannot apply to people who are eating or drinking people who have trouble putting on or taking off a face mask without assistance, um, people who have a bona fide religious objection or medical condition that prevent them from wearing a face mask. Um, you can't give fines or fees to a business or to an entity or to the principles of a business or entity because of customers that aren't wearing masks on their property. Um, any fine or penalty that is issued cannot exceed $50 per offense and cannot be punished by any term of imprisonment. Um, enforcement can only be made against individuals and, and there is no vicarious liability. It's only the people that, that directly themselves fail to comply that can be cited. Um, you cannot enforce this at a polling place. At any polling place, nobody shall be denied uh, entry or exit from a polling place for failure to wear a face covering. 
um, cannot be enforced on residential property, cannot be enforced. Um, oh, it, it may be enforced against individuals on private property, but so long as the owner or occupant consents to the enforcement. And so when it comes to things like business locations, they said the order says specifically that businesses can opt out of the mask ordinance being enforceable on their property. And so the way I the, the way the order reflect the ordinance that I've drafted reflects that is there's a sign that I created a sample sign that a business can post in their window. And if they post that on the window, then the sheriff's deputies going into that location cannot cite people on that property for not wearing a mask. If they don't post that on their window, then they're presumed to, to consent to the enforcement of the law um, on that on their property. Um, but that's that's just in the ordinance, which uh, which I prepared for Mayor Pro Tem. The the governor's order simply says businesses can choose whether or not it is it is um, consenting to enforcement, and they notify the public of that consent by posting a sign. Well, so the, my yes, sir, Michael. This is this is a a, a lot of a lot of information to to go over, uh, and I understand you've got a draft uh, of a mask ordinance and, yes, and a second ordinance uh, to require mask on government property. Yes, sir. Um, if we if we uh, uh, read and refer that tonight as new business and, and take it up uh, as a committee of the whole next Tuesday. I suppose if it was the will of the commission, we could add that to the agenda for the special call meeting along with CARES yeah. funding the mask ordinance so that we could pass it next Tuesday and finalize it at the special call meeting. Um, that may be a way that y'all can look at this and, and we get a draft of it out to you, Re read it and refer it tonight. Y'all can look at it and see what yeah. you think and then we'll take it up yeah. next week. At, uh, at committee meetings and if you if you so choose, put it on the agenda for final passage at the special call meeting at one o'clock next year. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, if I may. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mayor uh, Pro uh, uh, I, I think I think that that would be fine with me because this way it will give all commissioners the opportunity to read it, see it. And if they want to look at it, make amendments or, or what have you. Um, so if, if Michael can go ahead and, and email commissioners and where everybody can read it, understand it, and ask questions uh, over the next week. If you need to call Michael, then uh, let's just all try to work it out together, and I'm be, I'll be fine with that. Good. Okay. Well, then let, let's proceed that way. We'll read it and refer it tonight as new business, but we'll get Michael or Janice to send out the draft to, to all of the commissioners so you can have it and start studying it um, between yes, now and next Tuesday. And, uh, and I, I want – I got a couple more updates uh, uh, that I need to get to. Michael, you got anything else? Yes, sir. Just, um, I'm sorry that that basically covers the governor's order. But I was just going to mention under the Open Meetings Act, if you're having a special called meeting, you cannot amend the agenda once you send out the notice. So right. if you put it on the agenda, let's go ahead and put it on there, and right. then you can remove it if you decide not to. Correct. Correct. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll we'll okay. we'll put both of the CARES Act funding uh, uh, and the, the the mask ordinance on the special call agenda for next Tuesday at one o'clock. Um, I, I wanted to give you a census update because we've had a couple of, of uh, hey, Commissioner Lucas had some. Commissioner Lucas, I'm sorry. Did, oh, did you have I, something? I just wanted to be added since the uh, resolution I, that I sponsored originally passed. I certainly want to be added on as a sponsor on the Mayor Pro Tem's um, ordinance uh, and encourage all of us to do this because this is something very important for the entire uh, community. And I think all of our signatures need to be on it. And, and y'all be seeing two different ordinances, one for public property and one for private business. Right. And you want to be on both of them, Commissioner Lucas? Right. Okay. I'll do that. If, if the sponsor doesn't mind, <laughs> yeah, very I, good. I right, let, let me let me see if it, yes. let me let, let me see if I can move on to give you a quick census update. Uh, we, we've got two two uh, co-chairs of our of our complete count committee here at Macon Bibb County, and that's uh, our clerk Janice Ross and, and my secretary Carol Payton. And uh, Carol's going to lead us in a short uh, update of the uh, short short update. Uh, of the where we are with the census, Carol. You muted. Yeah, you got to touch the top up to the. 
<laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Hi. Macon Bibb County currently stands at a response rate of 50.2%. The final response rate for 2010 was 76%. So as you can see, we are way behind. In the next few days, we will be forwarding a letter from Mayor Rickert to local businesses and members of the Council on Clergy asking for their help in getting the word out. Enumerators began August 11th and they will finish up on September 30th, which is the deadline for everything. Your group counts, which are your nursing homes, your prisons, et cetera, will take place sometime in mid-September. Several other activities that will take place before the end of August include, um, we have several food distribution and census promotion events coming up. Uh, Friday, August the 21st at Pleasant Grove Baptist Church in Lizella. Wednesday, August the 26th at um, St. Paul AME Church, which is targeting East Macon and Beulah Baptist Church, which is targeting the downtown Macon and Houston Avenue area. Um, Monday, August 24th, Greater Bibb Mount Zion Baptist Church um, will be hosting a few distribution and census be counted and that's targeting South Macon Bibb County. Friday the 28th, there's a few food distribution and census be counted event at New Pilgrim Baptist Church, which is targeting the Bellevue neighborhood. On Saturday the 22nd, there will be a Hispanic be counted food and school supplies event that's going to be held in South Macon at the corner of Rocky Creek and Pinona. And then lastly, on Saturday, August the 29th, there is a census motorcade comprised of census partners and Macon Bibb County Department vehicles who are scheduled to go through low self-responding neighborhoods with a be counted message and awareness of census enumerators coming door to door. A listing, I have a listing of response rates by census track and if anybody would like to have a copy, I'll be happy to send you a copy. And I've also contacted the regional commission to see if there's a printable census track map that we could also put with that. Finally, we have more promotional materials available if you would like to get some for any group, organization or church that you know would like to distribute them. And right now, that's all I have. Carol, that's great. But what, what I would ask for you, oh, yeah, yeah, one last thing. You got a new, a new fan uh, design uh, for the census. But, but if you could email all of this information out, especially the dates and times of the different events uh, to every commissioner so that they would have them. It's, it's up to all of us at this point in time to, this is kind of crunch time. Uh, to try to get people to, to self-respond either by telephone or uh, on the email or uh, those two, uh, I think, are the easiest ways to go. There may have been a mail out that they could mail back in at some point in time, but the computer and the telephone, but crunch time, y'all, so to get the, get, the, get the count numbers up. So help us if you can. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor. Um, Carol, Carol, would the census tract tell us where where we are behind in certain areas of our county? Right, it, yes. it would. Are we gonna? Are you gonna send us that too, Carol? I can. Um, the yeah. only thing is, right now, it doesn't have um, like track one hundred and one. It doesn't have where track one hundred and one is, and that's uh -huh. why I'm trying to get a map. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Carol, and thank you, Janice, for all of your hard work on that. I, I know it's a it's a, a lot to do. The uh, last item we've got, as far as an update, uh, is on blight, um, and uh, I'll see if we can't pull up a little map uh, first. But two things I want you to remember: we talked six months or more ago about the the bound most more than that about the boundary expansion for the uh, Oak Muggy National Monument now Oak Muggy Mounds National Historical Park and we agreed as a commission uh, that that if there were any property that we owned that was going to be uh, transferred to the National Park Service and there was a blighted structure on it we would remove that at our expense 
uh, so the, the, the map that's in front of you, the yellow block at the bottom represents the, the current boundary uh, of the National Monument. Um, the blue line uh, that you can see uh, that kind of runs just a little bit above, it actually touches the yellow at one point, but it includes some space over off Clinton Street um, and it also includes some space off Plum Tree Lane and um, Fair Fairview, I think the name of it is. And, and so what I'm talking to you about tonight is in that lower right-hand corner uh, of, of, of Fletcher and Fairview and Plum Tree Lane. And there are three parcels that are in white uh, it, within that boundary line, those, those right there that Rachel is, is pointing to, those those three, they are blighted houses on two of those parcels. Um, and the land bank has acquired title uh, uh, through the, the tax uh, to those properties. And I've got a picture of them. The, and, and before we leave that, Rachel, let me back up one, one real quick. The, 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 Parcels shown in green are owned by the Macon Housing Authority, and the Housing Authority has agreed to convey those to the National Park Service. The parcels in red are owned by Macon Bibb County. They are all vacant, um, but they, we still have title to them, uh, as well as the street right of way. Uh, so they will be coming uh, for your uh, approval. Uh, a a um, gift to the National Park Service of all of these parcels and the right of way within that part. But now I go to the next part. slide. There you go. This is this is the the one of the houses is to the right. This is an illegal dump site obviously on, on the Fletcher Street. Uh, next slide. That's one of the <laughs> that's one of the houses on one of the lots uh, the, the, this there and then the fine right there, and then the final picture that's the other house on the other side of the street uh, this blighted. Um, do you remember we created a revolving fund uh, out of the proceeds of the uh, tax commissioner's subsequent tax sale uh, and, and gave the mayor the authority to, to identify houses and acquire them and, and blight them and then sell them and put the money back in? Well, I, I'm hoping that, that we can use those funds to acquire these houses, clean that place up, and make that part of the, the uh, donation to the National Park Service. And I was just trying to bring that to your attention. That's the way we're headed. We're talking to Cass now about when he can start tearing those things down since we've got the money appropriated and, and identified. Questions, comments uh, about that from anybody? Good, if not, <laughs> let, let me go on uh, to the la last item. We're not gonna have time, I'm afraid, to, to review the agenda for tonight, but we've got uh, we've taken care of the mask ordinance. We're going to read it and refer it. Uh, but the other item was the, uh, the the train recreation center, the contract with Piedmont Construction, uh, and Mayor Pro Tem uh, uh, made the motion to untable that if, and, and slash and do him with that. So here we are with the discussion. I'm hoping we can get a, a motion uh, to do pass and put it on the agenda for tonight's meeting and discuss it more at length at that point in time. I just got a question. Yes, sir. May uh, I about the mask mandate. Is there another wording that could be used? Because I think the word mandate kind of, you know, uh, folks see it as we're demanding something. Uh, uh, Michael, is, is there something else we could use? Because uh, as your, is, uh, the ordinance, a resolution, because if, you know, and I somebody has said that to me about the wording mandate, you know, uh, and, and it may just be nothing. Somebody, if, if everybody's fine with it, but just you know, that could, it, that I think could, it just sounds demanding to some folks. Right. That could certainly be an that could certainly be a, a, an amendment to it. We could refer to it as a, a health and health and safety uh, ordinance. Uh, excuse me. I think we need to stick with the word mandate because <laughs> we want people to know the seriousness of this. <laughs> And right. the mandate is the term that's used generally on this. So I think people ought to understand that we are saying that serious. this is serious. So let's, uh, y'all, let's keep mandate. Let's okay. Just, All right. Uh, that's fine. Going back to the 
to going back to the train recreation center, can I get a, a, a motion uh, to do pass that in the, in the committee of the whole so it will be on the agenda for action tonight? So moved. By Schlesinger, is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Lucas. Uh, then this really is just to move it and advance and put it on the agenda for the six o'clock meeting where we can discuss it more at length. So all in all in favor uh, of the uh, resolution signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say no. 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 Got two no's, but I think the ayes have it. So it'll be on the agenda for how six can you o'clock. Tell there's, how can you tell there's certain people that are muted? I didn't hear their, their vote. Well, I'm 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 basically heard the two no's, and I think the rest of the people are satisfied to put it on the agenda so you can vote against it. We'll have a roll call vote, but I'm trying to get us started on at six o'clock. Is what I'm trying to do. You're you're assuming there were never more than two yeses, but okay. yeah, that was a that was a ruling of the chair. Okay. <laughs> that was a ruling of the chair. So uh, it, it, well, it'll <laughs> it'll it'll you it'll be on the is. agenda, and we can talk about it at length uh, then. Um, very quickly, uh, then for the just just for everybody, to, uh, the old business that we're going to talk about. Uh, the first item of old business is an, an ordinance to approve and authorize the reappropriation of two hundred thousand dollars from SPLOS revenues uh, from the Central City Commons line item to pay for the Cotton Avenue Plaza. The committee of the whole recommends approval on that. I think that was a five to four uh, vote out of the committee of the whole. Uh, item B is a resolution authorizing the Americas and Sumter County Hospital Authority to issue bonds and refinance facilities in Macon. Committee of the Whole recommends approval of that. Uh, item C is a, a, a temporary expansion of downtown's First Friday to allow uh, First Friday type activities every night of the week, as I understand it. The Com Economic and Community Development Committee heard that and recommends uh, approval. Uh, item D is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement with the extension uh, of, of the Houston County Board of Health WIC program for the lease office space at 456. Facilities and Engineering Committee heard that and recommends approval. Item E is a resolution about uh, paying the lease agreement with A.T. Holt for the parking lot behind the courthouse for some of the courthouse parking and the Facilities and Engineering Committee recommends approval there. Um, item F is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute a <laughs> lease agreement for farm farming on the airport property and facilities and engineering committee heard that and recommends approval. Uh, item G is an ordinance to approve and authorize the appropriation of up to $40,000 for professional services and, and purchasing the landfill and the, and the transfer station to appraise them and, and get some uh, preliminary work uh, done on that as far as acquisition is concerned. Item H, resolution authorizing mayor to execute a purchase and sale agreement uh, for four uh, utility vehicles for the fire department. Um, and that was heard by the operations and finance committee who recommends approvals. Uh, then there's a resolution authorizing mayor to execute a construction contract with Stafford Builders for the Smart Park operations and finance committee heard that and recommends approval. And then there was a transfer uh, of the superior court clerk's uh, money within within her budget of seven thousand eight hundred dollars to to cover some salary increases in operations and finance committee heard that and recommended approval. Then there's some new business that I'll read when we get there. And the last item uh, of old business uh, is an item K is where we'll take up the train recreation center. And I'll make myself a note not to forget that. Any questions or comments about tonight's meeting? Okay, if not, then I'm going to adjourn this meeting so that we can start uh, with the, the uh, six o'clock meeting on time uh, for a change. So without, without objection, uh, I'll call this meeting, this pre-commission meeting adjourned.